The following WJR broadcast is brought to you by Mesa for good health, good business, and great schools. To learn more, visit mesa.org. Sadly, the final hour of our show for today. We all know, we've talked about it so often on the show, that the whole concept of nonpartisanship among Michigan Supreme Court justice justices is uh, is basically accomplished through a nod and a wink. You have the individual political parties that nominate candidates. And so you've got Democrats and Republicans. And then the moment they receive the nominations at their party conventions and go out and campaign, they're no longer Republican or Democrat. They're nonpartisan on the ballot. So it's it's a laughing stock. It's a joke. And everybody knows who they are, whether they're Republican or Democrat when they run. Uh, that's, that's not going to change anytime soon. When there's an opening for the bench... The governor has the right to fill it. There's an opening right now. Diane Hathaway, of course, uh, resigned in disgrace after she uh, was involved in those uh, illegal real estate deals that she admitted to in uh, in federal court. And so uh, Governor Snyder now has to fill that vacancy that has been created by the resignation of a Democrat. And she was a Democrat. The governor is being urged to take a little different tact than any of his predecessors have. Uh, The last time there was an opening on the bench, we had Jennifer Granholm, the uh, governor then, uh, replace outgoing Justice Elizabeth Weaver with with a judge from northern Michigan who who was a, uh, a Democrat. And uh, it was it was not even questioned uh, that she did that. Now, Governor Snyder is being told he should take a little different tack and accept the advice of a bipartisan judicial selection task force, uh, which would give him a list of names uh, from which to choose, presumably people from both parties. That idea is being supported by the Michigan Defense Trial Council. Tim Deemer is with us. He is with the trial counsel and also an attorney with Jacobs and Deemer, and we're happy to have him on the Frank Beckman Show. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Beckman. I'm sorry you told me to call you Frank. <laughs> I appreciate that. Good morning, Mr. Frank. Thanks I, for having me on today. That's all right, Mr. Deemer. Thank you. Uh, the uh, the whole concept that Governor Snyder should be the first to uh, to go along these lines, why should he be the first? It would uh, He'd be leading by example. I, I think you uh, raised a good point. You um, discuss not only the the current opening of where a uh, democratic justice is resigning and needs to be <coughs> excuse me replaced uh, midterm you raise the example of governor granholm having the the same right to pick a replacement when uh, justice weaver was leaving the bench and the uh, uh, perception is that and uh, um, just justice davis was attacked for this when he ran for election lost his seat that it was a result of a uh, backroom secret deal between um, uh, Gunnar for Granholm and, and Justice Weaver, and Justice Davis was uh, attacked incessantly on the airwaves for that. Well, was he, you know, he was the unfortunate victim of that backroom deal. Uh, c- correct, um, and, and 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 that is the concern. It's it's not uh, just an issue of when uh, a Republican gets to uh, replace a Democrat or vice versa. Uh, this is a nonpartisan issue. Uh, this is going to come up any time there is a, a vacancy in the future. And uh, the reason um, we, would ur- we have urged uh, Governor Stetter to adopt um, the Judicial Screening Advisory Commission is for that very reason, the public perception that uh, any replacement of Justice Hathaway would be the result of raw politics or political payback. Now, I, I don't think that's necessarily the case or that's going to be true, uh, it's a battle. It's, it's a matter of public perception. That is way the, the way it would be viewed, and that is the way that these justices are attacked um, uh, when, when they're up for re-election again. Tim, won't that be the case though? No matter uh, any time someone from his own party is selected, if that's the way he goes, mm-hmm. or before that Jennifer Granholm went, uh, anybody from her party wouldn't. Isn't it going to be portrayed that way anyways when that justice eventually runs? That this was a political choice. You know, it, it might be, and um, uh, with the Citizen United ruling from the Supreme Court, um, you know, the people can say whatever they want to say, essentially. But the, the, the difference is um, the Advisory Screening Commission would make the selection transparent. It would make it public. It would be in the open. Citizens would be encouraged to participate. Uh, the the uh, commission would consist of lawyers and non-lawyers, um, some appointed by the governor, 
some appointed by the State Bar of Michigan, along with the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, or who uh, he or she would uh, uh, select to serve in his or her place um, on, on the commission. Um, so it wouldn't be, uh, right now, um, Governor Snyder has come out and, and said um, he acknowledges the, the merit of what the task force has come up with, particularly on this, this point of uh, midterm vacancies, uh, has praised the report and recommendations, uh, but says the, the time is just not right. It's too quick of a turnaround time to create this procedure, and I, I, I agree with him there. Um, but he has the authority under the Constitution, under the laws of Michigan, to establish this procedure for himself uh, with an executive order to, to use um, a uh, nonpartisan advisory commission, um, all in the open, all for the public to see. So the perception of it being, or the accusation of it being, a backroom deal would would simply not be the case because it would happen right out in the open for everybody to see. Is that really how he should use executive orders, though, or or should that be a a decision best left to the legislature? Uh, personally, I do believe it would be best for the legislature to take this action, but. Um, it, there's nothing that would prevent uh, Governor Snyder from using uh, the advisory commission now. Uh, frankly, the, the law is, is as broad as possible. He has the discretion to pick whoever he wants as long as the um, candidate is a lawyer of at least five years, uh, a m- registered Michigan voter, and under the age of 70. He could pick names out of a hat. He could put a bunch of names on a dartboard and throw darts and, and pick whoever comes up. And there's nothing anyone or anyone could could do about that until there's, until the next election. Correct until the next election. Right, and and that's the big difference from uh, from the national scene where federal judges are appointed for life and state judges have to run for election uh, uh, at certain intervals. So it's uh, it's a big difference. A couple of other points I I want to cover with uh, our guest Tim Deemer as well. He's with the Michigan Defense Trial Council, and we'll uh, we'll cover those for you in just a moment on this big decision Governor Snyder has upcoming: how to replace Diane Hathaway on the state supreme court. But right now, talking about this idea for changing the way a governor would replace Supreme Court justices on the, uh, uh, well, when these circumstances occur, when there is a vacancy on the bench, such as there is right now. Tim Deemer's with us. He uh, is with a, a trial uh, lawyers group, and uh, he suggests that the governor ought to use executive order to create this special screening task force, uh, one that's made up of people from both political parties. The idea seems to be, though, Tim, there's so much distrust in politics today that, yeah, it would be a great idea if uh, a governor, whether it's Democrat or Republican, consider people from both parties. But the idea seems to be that you've got a very moderate Republican governor right now. You want him to change the trend when we all know that if a Democrat was in power, the unions would pressure them to make sure the unions and trial lawyers, uh, frankly, no offense intended, would would pressure that governor to, to choose someone on that side of the aisle no matter what. You buy that, that there's that distrust that would uh, really prevent this from going both ways? And, and that's why I would, uh, we've, we've urged the governor to take, take the lead on this. There's, you know, for example, on, uh, on, on another um, issue, there's broad support in Michigan for increased disclosure of uh, campaign contributions for our judicial elections. Uh, I believe the public supports that over 90%, and yet we've had no legislative action on that front. Um, frankly, it just, it just has not happened for, for whatever reason. And why, while I believe that it would be preferable for the legislator to adopt um, this procedure for midterm vacancies, um, th- there's not the momentum to do it now. And I believe that Governor Snyder taking the lead, um, creating this commission um, for any future vacancies, I understand he can't do it for the current vacancy, uh, would really send a signal to uh, the legislature that this is a, a good idea for Michigan, and the legislature would understand that this, um, by legislatively adopting it, it would apply to not just the current Republican Governor Snyder, but uh, our next governor might be uh, a Democrat, mm-hmm. and that they would be able to um, bind the next governor to follow this uh, commission as well. Sure, or a stronger conservative uh, along the lines of a John Engler, say, where the, the other side would say, uh, you know, the chamber's got all the in- influence there, and, uh, you know, he's going to make those choices that way. So it's an interesting concept. The question is, should the governor do it by executive action? Or should you uh, should we be pressuring the legislature in some way to take this action? That's the big question, isn't it? Uh, correct. And um, I, you know, again, the, as the leader of the 
uh, government in Michigan, the leader of the Republican Party in Michigan, um, Governor Snyder, could, could uh, really change the debate. He could really put the, the pressure on the legislature to adopt, legislature to adopt this provi- provision um, if he were to adopt it by executive order now. Because, uh, again, frankly, he could um, uh, pick a candidate any way he, he wanted to, names out of a hat um, uh, or a random pick. Um, so uh, I don't think anybody wants that, and obviously there are no checks and balances in the current system. And, uh, I think if you announce that you have chosen a name out of the hat for a Supreme Court vacancy, you might decide right then not to run for re-election, though. You know, uh, I don't think that would go over too well. Have you got, I know you've written a letter to the governor on this. Uh, very quickly, any response yet? We've not uh, heard a response, no. Um, uh, we, we sent the letter, and uh, a couple of days later, uh, in an interview with the Detroit Free Press, uh, Governor Center came out and said that he's being urged to adopt this commission um, but the b- abrupt resignation of Justice Hathaway uh, would prevent him from uh, using it this time around. But he, you know, in- interestingly enough, he did say that he would consider it for the future. All right. Yeah. We'll, we'll see what happens. Thanks for the time this morning. Appreciate it. Good to have you on the show. Thank you, Frank. I really appreciate it. Take care. That's Tim Deemer from the Trial Lawyers and uh, with Jacobs and Deemer, the attorney firm. And uh, the, uh, the suggestion continues for Governor Snyder to go to this executive action to create this panel of bipartisan members who would recommend who he should choose to replace Diane Hathaway in the Michigan Supreme Court. <laughs> Talking about what matters to you. Frank Beckman Middays. Catch it live on News Talk 760 WJRAM and stay up to date on.